Good evening, and welcome to the Sound Off Show. Whoops, <laughs> my, hair, my hair is flying around. <laughs> yeah, I'm just me, folks. In case you watch the show regularly, you know that. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Sound Off Show. My name is Linda Kirker, and I'm your host for the show. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, there's so much to talk about. Um, and I have a guest who knows a lot about what's happening in the state and in the country, and um, that's always good. That makes for an interesting show. Um, I want you to know, if you don't watch on a regular basis, that uh, the phone number for the show will be on the screen and at some point. And um, after we get started, oops, there it is, asking you shall receive <laughs> and um, so if you have a question or a, a brief comment um, I would love to hear from you so that we can hear what the folks out there are thinking about okay so um, with that um, I just want to thank all of our veterans out there and all of our current military and all law enforcement, all of these folks who spend their lives on our behalf trying to keep us safe and protected. And uh, they deserve a lot of credit and a lot of appreciation. And so I, I just want you to know that I'm one of those folks out of the many who just thinks you're great. And thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us and for our state and our nation. It's much appreciated. With that, I would like to introduce my guest, um, a gentleman who's been on the program before. His name is Guy Page. And Guy, hi. Guy, <laughs> welcome back. Glad to be here. Yes, nice to have you here, uh, always. And um, you live in Berlin, Vermont, That's so right. you had a little bit of a drive. Mm -hmm. But I guess the weather cooperated. Yes, it did. And um, I know I probably don't have this all right, because you're such a, an involved and busy man and talented. But <clears throat> I don't know. I don't talk much these days, because I'm home by myself. Mm -hmm. So if my voice gives out on me, it's because I haven't been using it. <laughs> then you'll take charge, right? So um, you are the publisher, producer, what have you, of Vermont Water Cooler. Yes. Dot com and Vermont Daily. Yes. And the Chronicle. That's right. Is there something else? No, that's it. That's the trifecta. You think that's enough? Uh, yes. <laughs> so um, before we get into other topics, um, is there anything you'd like to tell the viewers about those particular publications? That oh, sure. Uh, so Vermont Daily is now a, a, a daily online newspaper for Vermont. Uh, for with Perhaps more from, from my perspective and yours, I would say, Linda. Uh, we cover the news, and we have now four or five stories a day on what's happening in state government, what's happening around the state. Uh, I invite people to subscribe. It's free. It's at www.vermontdailychronicle.com. Vermont written out? Yes. Vermontdailychronicle.com. That's right. Okay. And, uh, VT water cooler is a lot of fun. That's something that every day I get up, the first thing I do after breakfast is I find the 10 most interesting news stories, Vermont news stories of the day. Ah. And I post a headline, a link, an excerpt, and later in the day we, we publish the top 10 stories of Vermont. Wow. And people get to comment on them. Yes. And right now, you know, comments. It's online. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's all online. It's uh, vtwatercooler.com. And the comments are really important because uh, Seven Days and VPR and VT Digger have all stopped a comments section. Oh, really? Yeah, you can't comment on their website anymore. Well, gosh, God forbid we should have a voice. Indeed. <laughs> and that, I, and I can tell you, uh, in case of VT Digger, the, the whole... The backlash against BLM, uh, the publisher, Ann Galloway, said on a 
uh, I believe a public TV show, uh, said one of the reasons that they cut their comments was having to deal with all of the uh, the critical comments of BLM that that Vermonters were making. Really? So they're definitely yes. You you were I don't know if you were kidding, Linda, but you were telling the truth that 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 the the having to sort of deal with public opinion became perhaps a bit too much of a burden. I love it. I love comments. I think they're the most interesting thing on around. Well, where else do does the general public have an opportunity? I mean, newspapers are kind of fading away out yes, of the picture because exactly. of all the everything that happens on the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I think you're really smart to use that vehicle, the the uh, computer, for people to have a say. Mm -hmm. I wrote in once, I think. All right, <laughs> but Thank I'll you. I'll. Um, I'll see what I can do okay. going forward. You may not. I, I When I write, I write, but I'll try to keep it short. Okay. But this is great. So you're getting a lot of feedback, a lot of you sure pe are. people responding. Yep. Uh, we've been reaching out and spreading the word, and more and more people are. My subscriptions for Vermont Daily, for example, have just gone through the roof. Really? Uh, they've gone... I wouldn't say 50% in the last two or three months, but close to 30 or 40%. Wow. Uh, and uh, the, the numbers for, for a water cooler also have grown. So, yeah. So now, which, well. which one, uh, there must be at least one where people need to make a contribution or, or you pay to, for the benefit of? Actually, uh, if people want to contribute to Vermont Daily, they can. There's a little you know, thing you can click on on the website, fine, it's wonderful, uh, but they don't need to. And uh, Water Cooler and the other, uh, and the, the, the newspaper, the Chronicle, which is comes out when the legislature is in session, it's an actual newspaper. Those are, uh, those are free and are, are not particularly, uh, no, there's really no donation mechanism for those yet anyway. Well, it's a great um, opportunity for folks to get a handle on some of the things, many of the things that are happening mm -hmm. in our state. That's right. And in our leg, the because I know that you um, you do commentaries on specific bills mm -hmm. that are taking place, are being presented sure. um, in the legislature and the votes and, you know, comments about those bills. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a real education process. And you can access it at your leisure. So there are a lot of positives. Yeah. A mutual friend of ours, Pat, Pat McDonald, down oh, yeah. in Washington yes. County, uh, says that she likes to read Vermont Daily because it's, I, it, it's easy to read. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, I really intentionally don't pretend that I'm writing to lawyers or for lawyers. I just write, I pretend I'm sitting on a bar stool and I'm trying to explain what's going on to the guy next to me. Yeah. And I, I really think that's simple. the best way to write. Yes. You keep it simple, but you, you portray or you, you um, what's the word I want? You um, share the important information. Mm -hmm. Right. But in a very easy way to comprehend. That's what I shoot for. That's yep. the way I like to, I don't, frankly, I don't have time to wade through some deep, long story Keep it about simple, actually. right? <laughs> well, th these are all wonderful um, opportunities for the public. So, folks, it's, again, vermontwatercooler.com. And then uh, Vermont Daily is www.vermontdailychronicle.com. That's it. And then... The Chronicle is something separate. That is a, a that is a printed newspaper that that is printed uh, during the legislative session. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, uh, I've seen that a number of times, yeah. and it's I mean it's really nice. We try. Yeah, you do a good job. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Keeping us informed. And it's the fun. more people who know about it, the better. Mm -hmm. So you're really providing a great service. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Linda. You're welcome. So um, for 
Why don't, what, what will be our first hot topic tonight, other well, than what we've just talked about? Uh, I, to me, I, I did three stories in Vermont Daily today, and I'll give you the quick headline for each of them. Okay. The first one is that Vermont does use Dominion voting machines. Now, they're an older model than the one that's, that's controversial around the country. Uh, but a lot of people have been asking, well, what do we use here in Vermont? Well, it, it is Dominion, and I, the Deputy Secretary of State wrote back a, a long explana uh, answer to my question about this that you can read on Vermont Daily, and he, he talks sort of perhaps disparagingly about the uh, conspiracy theorists who are all over this Dominion thing, and he's just sort of kind of poo-pooing it all. Oh, no. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's, that's an interesting read. Uh, another... I thought a very interesting, I, I almost couldn't believe it, actually. I heard Sarah George, the Chittenden County prosecutor on a radio show last Friday, say that she does not think that violent criminals should go to jail. <laughs> that, that, that's, that really what they need are services, particularly mental health services. She said sometimes just just a good toothbrush so that they can eat because they're, they've lost their teeth and they can't eat very well. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Uh, and Kurt Wright, who was doing the interview, uh, I believe you may have served with him yes, in the legislature. Yes, I did, yes. Uh, said, well, but it's actually, a, at least we all know that when they are in prison, they're not hitting anyone over the head with a club like <laughs> they were doing on Church Street. And she said, well, yeah, but when they get out, they're, they're worse off because they're so traumatized in prison. And, you know, there's some truth to what everyone says, and I'm, and I'm sure uh, there's, there's uh, downsides to being in prison, and, and we need to have services to help mentally ill people get better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it was all very much uh, what they need are mental health services, and, and it was almost as if she would, if she had her druthers, she would never send any violent criminal to jail. I, I may be overstating that, but boy, listening to that interview, that was kind of the impression I got. You know, um, it's very sad when peop um, a person, shall I say, a person's life is such that they are um, likely to commit crimes, okay. to harm other people, or to destroy property, mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. It's very sad to me yeah. that someone is that in that kind of a state of mind, and um, I I kind of understand what the woman you were referring to said. Sarah George, right? That these people, um, well, everything starts with the family, in my view. Even even if you you could be a wonderful family, and there still could be a child who diverges from the structure of the family, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, but by and large, <laughs> I, I think you do the crime, you do the time. Because if you don't have consequences for harmful things that destroy another person's life or, or property or whatever it might be, then there's no reason not to keep doing it. There have to be consequences. Mm -hmm. It's like a little child who starts breaking dishes in the house. You know, you have to give them time in the corner, you know, to sit there and, and right. to think about what they've done or to give them a little, some work to do, you know, as mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a punishment or whatever. I don't know, because those, those um, ideas about what you can get away with need to be addressed when you're young. Right. And then hopefully the vast majority of people will get it. I know there are people out there who are hurting. I was a nurse. I'm a caretaker. I, I, I care about people. I'm a nurturer. But 
we have to get to the heart of, of the issues. But as far as committing crimes, like all of these people in Washington and, and other Democrat, you know, big cities, um, who are getting away with mm. destroying right. private businesses and and putting some sort of bombs into police cars and what? Right. You know, yeah. I personally feel, you may not agree, but I personally feel that they are being paid, many of them, to commit these atrocities mm. uh, because there are people who want to destroy this country. You know, I hope that I know some of them are being prosecuted, and my hope is that in the process of their prosecution, perhaps to cop a plea deal or something, they may start talking. And they may say, uh, uh, you know, I guess a 10 or 20 stretch in a federal prison is nothing to sneeze at, and maybe I should, I should rat out the people who were supporting me. Yeah, um, going into... Uh a jail cell for a length of time or a big prison facility is not very appetizing. No. But we get what we ask for. Right. And um, anyway, this is, this is tough because we have a lot of problems with drugs that, that color people's thinking and they do things mm -hmm. in order, order to get money for drugs. And it, it's, to me, it's heartbreaking. Right. It's really heartbreaking. And I know that there are good people out there, some of them have been on this show, who work with people who have these problems, mm -hmm. you know, addictions and so forth. And I give them a lot of credit yes. for uh, trying to help people to get their lives around the corner so that they can have a happy life, mm -hmm. a healthy and a happy right. life. One of the sad things about this pandemic, Linda, is that, uh, for example, I'm, a, I'm on the board of the church of prison, and, and there's a, a, a very active, I'm on the board of the church of prison, and there's a very active volunteer ministry that goes in there and helps people with their issues, and when they get out, helps them transition. Mm -hmm. Very, very good work they do. And we cannot get volunteers right now into the prisons. And I, <clears throat> during the press conferences, I've asked twice, uh, when will volunteers be able to go back in? And they always say, hmm, not for a while. Oh. So this is a, the, some of the many, many downsides of the pandemic and of the restrictions that uh, whatever we think of them and their necessity, uh, there are a lot of sort of human downsides, and that's one of them. Boy, you're, you're right on target there. Um, I, ju I was just reading where th uh, in the newspaper where the hospitals are not mm. allowing people yes. in. Yes. It would have to be, I think, a dire emergency. And I, frankly, I don't know, but I'm assuming that there are not a lot of people working in the hospitals. The people who aren't, uh, if, if someone needs a, like a translator, or they have a particular need for one person to be there for some special reason, there is a few exceptions. But as Mike Smith said today, the Human Services Secretary at the press conference said, mm -hmm. very limited circumstances on which visitation will be allowed. And what about schools and the children? Hmm. Now, there are a number of parents. If you work in a school and the school's not open, then you, know, you can be home with your children um, or if you work at a hospital and they're not letting you work now and you have children, you can be home with your children. But, and <laughs> um, certain types of restaurants and bars and things are, you know, being controlled as well. Mm -hmm. uh, time frames and everything. Um, I don't know how this is going to go away, but I will say for all of the negativity about it, we have to have hope and think positively sure. that this will pass. This too shall pass. Right. And um, just do the best we can on a daily basis. For those of us who live alone, you know, you don't see many people. Um, I need to make more phone calls. <laughs> um, 
But, um, you know, it is what it is, and you have to take that situation and try to do the best you can with it. It's like anything else in life. Mm -hmm. You know, there we're all paying a price now for this in one way or another. Right. And I'm, I'd like to think that in the long term, something really positive will come out of this. Mm. That's my hope. Right. I think a lot of that is up to us, Linda, to to make sure that our leaders are doing right by us, mm -hmm. insisting, because because we are a republic of the people, by the people, for the people. Absolutely. Not the other way around. Of the people, by the people, yeah. for the people. Right. Yep. And that's a blessing that we have that. Right. It's so unique in the world. And we have to protect it. We have to make sure our children are being taught about why they have freedom and opportunities and rights mm -hmm. as individuals. I made a note here as something to talk about. I, I just kind of wove into yeah. that just now, but um, I was, oh, about the free market capitalism, mm -hmm. which we have in this country so far anyway, versus socialism. Mm. And where under free market capitalism, you have independence, you have, pro you have the opportunity to become prosperous through your own work ethic, you have individual rights, mm -hmm. which are enumerated in the Constitution, and you have limited, or we're supposed to have, limited government. <laughs> Um, and under socialism, you have government control of your life. You have less freedom. There's less desire to work hard and excel because you don't really reap the, the benefits of your labor. Right. And government expands to take over every measure of your country. And as you and I know, our U.S. Constitution where it enumerates the federal government responsibilities or duties or empowerment does not include education or health care. Right. And I just heard today that under the Biden folks, so to speak, um, what is it they want to do? Oh, they want the Department of Education, the Federal Department of Education, to take over all education in the country. Wow. Yep. That's socialism. Wow. And the federal government has no authority to do that wow. under our laws. So folks, fight back. It's good that we have different schools that focus on, you know, what they feel is important for the young people to learn. And, and the founding principles of this nation must be taught. U.S. history must be taught. Or our children, who are the future of this nation, will not understand why they have rights. They won't even appreciate it. Right. Opportunities and rights and freedom and so forth. They have to be taught how fortunate they are to have all of those things that are rare around the world and that have made this country prosperous and hum through the years. I'm, it's amazing to me that Hollywood hasn't made a really good sitcom or drama <laughs> out of the Constitution. Uh -huh. Like the first, like a, <laughs> a, a, a great drama about free speech. Another one, the second week, about religious freedom. Hollywood? They should. Wouldn't Holly that be good? Hollywood? Well, we can hope, Linda. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm dreaming. But they should. I think that'd be really cool. Yes, it would. Well, I'm working on something. Okay. With uh, a friend of mine um, from Rutland. And when I brought it to their attention, what, what I'm thinking, the response was, I'm in. This is this is great. I'm All right. in. <laughs> so, but it's going to take a little time. Um, but I think it might be useful for those who are open to it, huh. and uh, parents can get access to it and share it with their children. 
You know, you mentioned parents and children. Um, oh, first of all, when you when that's ready to go public, make sure you tell me about it so I can put it in Vermont Daily. Oh, oh okay? great. I hadn't thought of that. Um, and the, the second thing is that in Vermont now, because of this pandemic, I asked the education secretary today, how is homeschooling doing? And he said that there are twice as many people homeschooling in Vermont, like over 4,000 than last, than last year. Oh, I knew it had gone from 1,000 to 2,000. No, 4,000. Whoa. Yes. So. I need a hair size. Uh, that. that <laughs> That's I have a, one. I just didn't get to see her that's, for a that's long time. That's not a mirror, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I, look, I'm just me. I know you, you are. Know, no God air, bless you. You no are. No airs. No, yeah. just yeah. I am who I am. Yeah. Take it or leave it. That's right. I try to be a good person like you. You succeed. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. So do you. <laughs> Thanks. So, you know, uh, as as we move from one topic to another they all kind of you know they all kind of blend in mm -hmm. to what life is like in the United States of America and how it's changing mm -hmm. there are people the socialist approach versus the um, the constitutional approach where the people are empowered right. versus the government under socialism being empowered and I don't want, life hasn't always been easy, but I don't want the government taking over my life. Right. I want to be strong enough to figure out how to get through. It's not that we don't all need help once in a while, you know, but there are places, there are people, you know, there are organizations that will help. Mm -hmm. um, if you need something on a temporary basis to get you through a rough time, yeah. you know, and that's a blessing of the free market. You have that option. Uh, but I'm worried about the country. I'm really worried. I'm glad I'm old. I want to go back to the 1950s, but nobody will let me go. <laughs> what a great time that was. <laughs> yes, I, I was... Uh, Three years old when it ended, so I, I, my memories are hazy. <laughs> You're just a baby. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, what else? Did you have other things? On? Sure. Uh, there was a. Uh, I saw a press release from Planned Parenthood in our local newspaper that bragging about how we got 90 seats in the legislature this year, and I thought to myself, well, seems to me, you know what actually happened. They, everyone, most people know now that Republicans picked up three or four seats in the legislature. And so I looked at those seats, the seats that, had, that were Democratic last year or progressive, mm -hmm. and flipped Republican. Linda, all six that I could find were all Planned Parenthood champions. They, were, they had 100% ratings of approval from Planned Parenthood. And they lost their seats. And they, they, those seats went Republican. In one case, it was a person who decided not to run again, mm -hmm. Chip Conquest over in Newberry, I believe. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, it was someone who ran again, and they got beat. And well, that's a step in the right direction. It sure is. And, and two of them well, Mitzi Johnson didn't technically have the champion label because she did, as a speaker, she doesn't vote. So that, and they were basic on votes, but she did have Planned Parenthood's endorsement, strong endorsement. Well, she lost. Down in Middletown Springs, the chairman of the Progressive Caucus, the number one progressive in the legislature, got voted out wow. by a pro-life Republican. Wow. <laughs> and there were three or four other seats where the same thing happened. Uh, I, I'm not positive because I, I may have, this one may have gotten past me, but I think there may be a Franklin County seat where that happened as well. Uh, so uh, what, what I look at that and I say, well, what does that mean? And I think what it means is that this year, Planned Parenthood pushed and pushed for something called uh, Proposition 5, mm -hmm. which Prop was a, five. a constitutional amendment that would make 
uh, abortion 100% absolute, live birth abortion, late term, 12 year olds having, abortion, having abortions, no input from the parents. The whole enchilada from mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood's point of view would be enshrined in the Constitution. Free reign. And the reality is that most Vermonters, as, as blue as we are, most Vermonters don't support that. That is not a majority point of view. I believe it. And so I think that there may have been uh, some, Verm some voters who didn't exactly advertise the fact because it's, you know, it's a controversial position among your family and friends, but they're saying, you know what, that guy, or that guy, that gal, they voted for that mm -hmm. Prop 5. I can't stand that. And no. they've been in the mix. It's, um, it's no respect for human life. Right. And, and when you don't have, per <clears throat> excuse me, parental notification that, a, oh, yeah. you know, a 12 or 13 year old who might get pregnant, God forbid, um, and then go and have an abortion, mm -hmm. and then feel like, you know, all worried and upset, and what have I done, and what, you know, I could have had a, a wonderful little child. I mean, who who wants to think about that at 12 or 13 years old? Right. I understand, but there's something called adoption. Right. Three of them. Really? I've adopted three, three Have children. Have you yes. really? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Well, lucky me. They're great kids. Oh, yeah. well, they have a great dad. <laughs> well, good for you. You know, so you're an example of what can happen. Yeah. You know, that there is a place for these babies. That's right. Instead of aborting them. My daughter in high school, uh, we adopted her from the inner city in Philadelphia. Wow. And she said, she wrote a, a, a paper in high school saying, oh. the reason I am pro-life is that uh, I, if my mother had aborted me, uh, you know, single mom and in tough circumstances, uh, I, I wouldn't be here. Oh, what a great, <laughs> yeah, and I and, hope and that was shared with her classmates. Yes, it was. Yeah. Good for her. Right. And so appreciative. Yeah. It's a gift. It is. A home and a loving family, it's a yeah. gift. Yeah. And a precious... Pro there's probably not a more precious gift, love. That's right. And, um, yeah, I, I hope that, well, Vermont Right to Life, I've had Mary Beerworth mm -hmm. on this program a number of times, a couple of times a year maybe. Good. And um, she, you know, she does such a great job mm. um, with, with Vermont Right to Life. And they, but... Planned Parenthood, I'm told, can get into the schools, but Vermont Right to Life can't, cannot mm -hmm. get into the schools. Now, why? what's going on there that the schools will accept talk about abortion, but they won't talk, uh, allow an entity that wants to protect and preserve precious life? Right. I don't know. I, I do know there was a law passed recently that says that every school is required to give out free contraceptives? They're in the nurse's office, I'm told. That's right. If you're uh, in, I think, sixth grade? I, I believe that's right. 11 or 12 yeah. years old, you can go into the nurse's office at school and get a condom? And it's required. Some schools sort of had it before, just out of, that was their choice. Now it's got to have it. Mandatory. Right. So what is what is the message? <sighs> Go ahead and be promiscuous well, at that age. I I I, sh I hope somewhere along the line someone is talking about abstinence. And uh, that's that's what we need to do. Right. You know, it's not be going into the classroom and being judgmental. It's explaining Right. about what the options are and why it is or is not wise to get yourself involved in sure. sexual relations when you're 11 or 12 years old. You know, if you're not prepared 
to have a pregnancy and to raise a child, then you should be thinking twice about mm -hmm. um, not getting involved in, in sexual relations. Well, you know, Linda, a lot of Vermont's legislation comes direct from California. It's a oh, fairly, goody. There's, a, there's a pipeline. <laughs> and last, several months ago, California, I believe their legislature passed a law that decriminalizes some child sex. Some, so a, a 22 year old man would, it would be a decriminalized act to have sex with a 12 year old girl. Or for that matter, 22 year old man and a, 22, and a 12 year old boy. Mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. Uh, and I, I was just, I thought, really? They actually, someone actually voted for that? But they did and Gavin Newsom signed it. And so I must say I'm watching for that in the legislature this year because what happens in California usually a year or two later it's in Vermont. My guest on the show last week was talking about prostitution and sex trafficking mm. and boy does she know her stuff Bethany Syverson. Ooh, right. Um, she drove here all the way from New Hampshire wow. just to get, just to help enlighten the folks Good. you know the viewers um, and um, she, she's she's a smart cookie, mm -hmm. and she knows what she's talking about. Yes. And this sex trafficking and prostitution is happening right before our eyes in this state. Sure. sure. Absolutely. And um, so, you know, we need to protect our children. We need to educate them. I was so naive when I was growing up. Even in high school, I didn't know a darn thing. And I'm glad. Hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I was too busy uh, acting in plays and singing in the choir and, and playing sports and, you know, so yeah. many things that, that are much healthier. Sure. <clears throat> excuse me, at that age. And um, it was never a thought in my mind. I didn't know anything about it anyway. Right. Right. But the, in those days, we didn't have so much uh, available or it just put in front of your eyes mm -hmm. um, about these types of things. Right. right. You know, we were we were young. We were busy doing you know healthy things. Right. And um, so I'm not sorry. I right. didn't know anything. I'm glad for that. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, it's just um, there's a right time, right? And um, you need to make, be able to make a good decision. Mm -hmm. You know. Anyway, you know that's all um, wishful thinking that it would be that way these days. Yeah. There's so much exposure, you know, and it's not healthy. Yeah. Anyway, what else? Um, let me see. How about Vermont's finances? Hmm. I'm really worried about that um, $4.5 billion oh, dollar the, shortfall. The, the pension shortfall. Yeah, sure. pension and health care. Right. Serious problem. They need to change that law. Yeah. Well, you know, Carolyn Brannigan ran for treasurer uh, on, and one of the things that really made her different from Beth Pierce, the incumbent mm -hmm. who ended up winning, mm -hmm. was that as far as the pension goes, whereas Beth Pierce was saying, no, we need to keep a defined benefit for the pension. That is, we will guarantee a certain amount of money. Carolyn, as I understand it, was saying, we will guarantee the contribution, but the benefit will be at the, at the whim of the market. It'll be like like sort of any other investment, which seems to me a lot more prudent. It, frankly, it's what most pensions are like now. They're more defined contribution rather than defined benefit, and would would be a start in getting us out of the very very deep hole that we're in. But she didn't win, and there's no sign that Beth Pierce is going to uh, move on that. 
Well, something has to be done, and in my not so humble opinion, I don't think that the state of Vermont, the legislature, um, which is 70% Democrat, mm -hmm. um, can or should, uh, they should not um, raise any more tax, no more programs that are going to tax the people. They need to start cutting back, um, and the cost of education, there needs to be an audit of the Department of Education um, and the Agency of Human Services. Mm -hmm. Those two departments need a tough audit. But who's the current auditor? I've forgotten. Doug Hoffer. Doug. Bernie okay. Sanders uh, supporter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know if it was Doug Hoffer, I think it was, who tried to do an audit of one of the departments of the Agency of Human oh. Services. You may be right. And this was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he couldn't get any real information because there were no clearly defined goals right. to accomplish that he could measure, you know, with the cost mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. But something has to be done, especially starting with those two departments, right. to get them on a footing where um, the costs uh, are real. That's where most of the money is. Yes, and when you look at, I was just reading some notes from a presentation that Art Wolf gave, uh, an economist who was just retired from uh, UVM as an economist. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to get him back on the show. But at that time, yeah. and it could have been a few years ago, but the national per pupil expenditure was $12,000 a year. Mm. At the same time, Vermont's was 20, I believe. 20,000. That's $8,000 different difference average um, average I would say per child. Mm -hmm. We don't have the money for that. Mm. But and we lost 30,000 students since 2005. I remember that clearly. Yep. We had 105,000 K through 12 students at that time. And now we're down to 70 maybe, somewhere in that neighborhood. We lost a lot of students. Mm -hmm. So why didn't the cost of education go down significantly? Well. We brought three and four year olds now in, right? They, right. they put so many regulations on the daycare, private daycare providers, costs and, and regulations that most of them went out of business. And don't you think the goal was to get the three and four year olds into the schools? Certainly. I, I just wrote a letter to the editor about that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The other thing is the, the great solution to school spending was supposed to be the school mergers. Oh yeah. But Sure, they forced school mergers and no savings, no real value. Now, at, for one year, I think there was a little benefit, but it went away in a hurry. Right. And, and right now, the, it's, it's almost pathetic, but the, the Education Committee, House Education Committee Chair Dave Sharp, who was, who was going, go school mergers, we really need this, has been saying very publicly in the last year or so, what the heck happened? We were, we were lied to by these superintendents. They, they didn't deliver anywhere near the savings that, that they said would happen. And so he's sort of blaming them, and I'm not sure who's to blame, but the fact is that was, suppo that was the big move the state ma made, school mergers, and it, to save money didn't work. Well, um, one thing that I wonder about and you may know better than I, I think this was a few years ago, but I think we had like, how many superintendents of schools <laughs> Lots. in Vermont? We had a lot yeah. of them. In New York City, there's one for millions of students, mm. one superintendent, because mm. you can empower the principals mm. to enforce whatever the rules are, okay? Right. And you don't need these high-paying superintendent jobs 
by the score. You know, you don't need hundreds of them or whatever the number is. I don't know how many school districts right. we have. But um, maybe one per county instead of every school. Right. So um, there are ways to cut costs. Mm -hmm. But you have to have people who are willing to look at the situation, look at the capability of the the ability of the taxpayers to cover all these costs, which is really tough. And and then and then the other thing that has to happen is what are we getting for the money? What kind of outcomes do we have? Okay. I, I've spoken with seniors in high school who were getting ready to graduate. I've said this on the show before, so forgive me, folks. Um, but these young men that I spoke with were very upset that they didn't have a grade transcript that they could send off to a college. Right. Okay? So I don't know what they're doing now. I don't know if you get a one, two, three, or four or what, what your grade is these days, but it doesn't amount to anything. And where's the incentive to work toward a 90 or 100 grade? But if you're doing everything on the computer, they probably don't even have paper in the schools anymore. I don't know. I, I need to, I've spoken with teachers, and I, I have said to them, forgive me, but my, my personal view right now is that our teachers and our students are trapped in a failed education system. Mm -hmm. And every one of them agreed. Wow. wow. Every one. Wow. And so did the students. So what are we allowing to have happen at great expense? Is it that everyone agrees there's a problem, but the solutions, no one can agree on the solutions because they have a stake in it or what, what's going on with that? I think that the power, the people who have the authority to make the changes, <coughs> excuse me, may be benefiting from the way things are. Hmm. Um, but the, what, as a, a property taxpayer supporting the school system. I want our teachers to be happy. I want them to feel like they are doing a great job of educating our children to be as wise and, and informed as they can be and for the children to have responsibilities, not, you know, babysit, but have uh, responsibilities to learn hmm. but the teaching or whatever the process is for learning has to be motivating and inspiring right. and interesting for them to want to grasp all that information but if I had had to sit in front of a computer yeah. in my classroom instead of having my teacher speak with us and pr impart really great information to us make us think write papers about the topics and so forth, um, then, you know, I might not have learned what I learned. I'm not the smartest person in the world by far, but I loved school. Mm -hmm. I loved going to school every day. Right. And U.S. history was my favorite topic huh. ever. Huh. <laughs> so I would love to go in and talk with the students. I've done it twice. Right. Um, and it was a gift. It right. was an absolute gift for me. And probably anyway, for them, too. I hope so. I got a lot of thank you letters. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. When can you come back? Wow. Please awesome. come back. Even if you just talk about you. Well, I was talking about my life and the things that I, my mom taught me. Mm -hmm. My dad was, oh, he was fantastic, dad. Um, but my mom was tough. And she, she was loving, but she was tough. <clears throat> and work was a good four-letter word in our home. And, and I told the kids that, wow. and they laughed. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm so grateful for being taught responsibility and mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. That has gotten me through life. Right. But if, you, if everybody does everything for you and nothing's expected of you, what, what do you become? Right. 
You know, give the kids the gift of reasonable work. That, to me, I, I feel so blessed for that. Mm -hmm. Just so blessed. And I hope the parents out there, you know, give, them, give the kids little jobs that they're capable of doing and then make them a little tougher as they get older. And they'll develop self-confidence, you know, and feel capable. Mm -hmm. And that's a gift. Sure. So I'm on my soapbox again. Come on, you right. chime in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, Elections, um, Global Warming Solutions. Sure. Uh, Global Warming Solutions Act did pass. Uh, the very interesting thing is with the new alignment in the legislature, the Democrats and progressives will no longer have their own supermajority. So when the, when, the, when the legislature comes back in session in January. In Vermont? In Vermont. They, will have, they now have 99 seats, and they need 100 in the, the House. The Democrats. The Democrats. The Democrats and progressives, that coalition together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if they want to overturn one of the governor's vetoes, mm -hmm. as they did with the Global Warming Solutions Act, they will need not only absolute first ballot loyalty of every single member, which is, as you know, is pretty hard to do in a legislature. Mm -hmm. They'll also need at least one of the independents or some crazy rogue Republican <laughs> to, uh, to come along and vote with them. And that's really hard to do. So those maybe four seats net that flipped, that's a big deal. So there's that. Uh, and it's, it's very possible that if that were, uh, they, I wonder if they saw that coming, if that's why in the very end of the session they pushed through the Global Warming Solutions Act. Probably. Which they, is this way to basically weaponize all of state government to force the, the state's carbon emissions to drop to like, you know, it, to a very low number in just a few years. Yeah. And see, the crazy thing about all of this, Linda, is that if you had to guess, would you say that the United States carbon emissions have been going up the last five or ten years or going down? I would lot? guess down. They have been. Most people don't think that. They think, oh, no, we're just getting more and more. Oh, my gosh, we're terrible. We need to do something. Well, the fact is our carbon emissions ever since about 2006 have been going down and down and down every year. They were the lowest ever during the Trump administration. And like was, a lot of other good things. That's right. And, but this, he was being criticized so much, oh my gosh, the global warming, he's going to be terrible. Well, in fact, <laughs> the emissions were the lowest ever. And, and a, lot of, a lot of that really has to do with, with really one thing. What? The United States used to make electricity with coal. It now makes electricity mostly with natural gas. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of different factors. Yeah, there was a little bit of help from those windmills and those solar panels, and cars are more efficient, and uh, 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 lots of stuff. But really, the main driver, less coal, more natural gas. That is what has been dropping our carbon emissions. Now, uh, that pipeline um, that was being fought in years past, didn't that get built? Wasn't that a good thing? Um, I think if it's the... the uh, out, out west. Right. Um, uh, you know, there was, there was one that the Obama administration said, we're thinking about it. No, we're not going to let it happen. Um, there was another one um, uh, out west that did get built, so I'm not, sh I'm not sure which one. Um, yeah. Well, uh, Warren Buffett owns a lot of railroads, mm. and he was dead set against that pipeline because it would have eliminated the need for th the railroads sure. to transport sure. the product. Sure. Okay? So he was... He was out for himself. Wow. Yeah. 
and he was a big um, advocate to don't finish that pipeline. But coal, pardon coal, me. Coal has to be moved by railroad. Yeah. So that's that. That could be one of the big things. Oh, okay, okay, yep. So you know, people with a lot of money, and you know, mm -hmm. hey, if they've earned it in a health, you know, a, a legal way, right? All the more power to them. Sure. And a, you know what? It's not the poor people who provide. Um, <laughs> it's the fairy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's Linda's phone. Yeah, it's my phone. It's like a little <laughs> tiny tune. Sorry, I thought I, I turned the volume all the way down, but didn't pay any attention to me. It's a new, new phone, Kay. and I'm learning. Anyway, um, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, I think you were talking about uh, was Warren Buffett. Was that the last thing? Or, oh, uh, people who make a lot yeah. of money. It, they're the people who donate to good organizations mm -hmm. and and you know start businesses and provide goods sure. and services and jobs and so you know it ha we we as a country benefit from the people being empowered because then people like farmers hire people and business owners you know whatever fuel dealers and all different kinds of businesses hire people and provide goods and services. And that's something you can do in the United States of America because we have the freedom to do that. Right. And we need to fight to keep those things. That's right. You know, it's a blessing mm -hmm. that, I mean, the door is open. If you're a young person or even an older person and you have an idea you know this, sure. and you want to work toward making some wonderful goal of yours happen, yeah. then you can do it. I got into the newspaper business right when word processors were, were, were catching on. And, and uh, other, other uh, machines that, that suddenly I didn't need Fifty thousand dollars worth of equipment to get a paper ready to be printed. Mm -hmm. I needed about two thousand dollars worth of equipment. Wow! And wow! <laughs> so I said, okay, and I started. I published a Winooski newspaper that way, and then I published a. a I got into my my Colchester newspaper, which oh, I did really? for for fifteen years, and was able to do that because of the laser printer and the, the cheap word processor yeah. and all this really what we think of as now is very very basic equipment but that made it so that anyone out of their own literally out of my own bedroom I could start my own newspaper that's fantastic yes and somebody else initiated uh, the the equipment you know they right. started a business and designed that and, mm -hmm. and manufactured it and so forth so one one person's efforts can often help the advancement of another person's That's how goals. it works well we're down to a minute and a half oh time flies okay. i know yes, and i've done too much talking no, i wouldn't say so no. <laughs> oh, God. um any quick thing you want to say to the folks <sighs> Don't ever give in to the idea that we can't change things in Montpelier because we can. Because this year, we, we made, did. We made an inroad. We made an inroad. When, when all the experts and the pundits were saying, oh, well, uh, Planned Parenthood runs the show, and what they don't run their show, the renewable power industry runs the show. Actually, no. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And if people decide uh, we're not going to put up with this anymore in our district and the people that we elect, yes, they may be nice people and maybe we went, our kids went to school with their kids or whatever, but look at what they vote for. Is that what you want? Yeah, well, you have to know what they're voting for. You have yes. to know what they stand for before you elect them. Which is one of the things that in Vermont Daily I'm really working on. I Good. do a lot of roll calls, a lot of this is what this person in this district voted for. 
Okay. Well, I thank you for all you're doing for helping to enlighten the people. That's great. And I know you love doing it. Yes. <laughs> That's a gift, too. It shows. Folks, uh, another show slipped away so quickly. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you next week with another wonderful guest. You'll be happy. <laughs> so have a great week. And uh, I'll see you then. Good night. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Thank you.